guys welcome to the second vlog um of my channel for tonight yeah welcome back to the channel so um i will have just uploaded um a vlog about the london bar fiesta updates um i have tried my best to do this vlog um to debate in my head if i'm gonna do it or not the reason being is because this vlog is a bit touchy-feely um, maybe a bit uncomfortable for some people but I've seen a lot of stuff related to the subject in my media like my platforms on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook um, so I wanted to address it a little bit, just a little bit um, more awareness and support kind of thing so that being said um, it's, well, you will gather by the title now anyway, it's the subject of a miscarriage. So, um, I'm really sorry I'm coming at this weird storytelling angle, but, um, my light broke on my stand literally just after I was doing the little vlog, so I'm just kind of makeshifting things. But yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me. So recently I was made aware of a few people, um, I'm not going to mention names without permission, it's not really fair, I was made aware of a few people, um, maybe TikToks, or TikToks, TikTokers or whatever, that have gone through recent miscarriage. Um, I feel so many things because first of all when you are on social media you put yourself out there for criticism you're letting people into that part of your life um, you know it's you're, you're opening yourself up to vulnerability and then when you're ex letting all these people know about these things it's like sorry so tired from everyone today you know when you're putting yourself out there and telling people about these things in your life you're opening yourself up even more um, to comments, judgments, everything. Now, uh, miscarriage is a very taboo subject. When I said taboo, I hope I said that right. It's not talked about a lot. Um, I personally don't know if it's because of shame of women, because they feel embarrassed that it, they went through a miscarriage. If it's embarrassment that they haven't managed to carry a child, or they're too scared to talk about it because people don't talk about it. Um, there's just so much going in my head right now because of how I've been the. I've, I've tried to film this vlog three times, and each time I get tongue tied because I'm trying to say things and then they come out the wrong way or not how I want them to, and it's just full stop. Um, I'm not really good at these things because I just have so much to say and it just doesn't come out properly. Um, so I guess first of all I will explain that I want to talk about this person because I have gone through a miscarriage it wasn't a great experience and I still feel it even to this day even though I've got my three beautiful children which I'm so blessed with and so happy for even though they could drive you mad um, I still feel it how I felt when I when I felt I was pregnant felt found out I was pregnant to finding out that I was no longer pregnant. Now I still remember or I can still recall basically it was around March time that I felt pregnant for the first time. And I just remember feeling so full of love, um, so full, I, I felt like I was just a light bulb just glistening, glitter, because me and my husband had been trying for a few months and we weren't even aware at all that I was. Um, it was just such a windfall. And what was funny was, well it shouldn't be funny, but what the only thing that was funny was 
one of our friends that we were staying with at the time, visiting. She knew I was. She could tell from the signs, but I just thought they were being funny. Because she's such a funny, funny little character, is my friend. I'm not going to mention her here, but yeah, she's uh, just an extraordinary person. And she gave me the test as a joke, in my opinion. And then I remember taking it thinking nothing's going to be right, and I was just shaking with it in my hand because I just couldn't believe it. Um, I remember tearing up a bit and just feeling my whole body going numb because I was like I can't believe it, I really can't, I, I just, it's unreal. And just going home that day, I was just, even though I haven't got a bump, I was just clenching my stomach thinking oh my god I can't believe it. I just, it was like, if you've been trying for a child and you've been waiting for a long time and you've had disappointment, you'll know how I was feeling, basically. Um, but yeah, and then obviously started bleeding a bit and I was just told it was normal, my GPs. Um, sometimes it happens. Nothing had been set in stone yet. Um, and then I went to visit my husband at his workplace where we'd met and I started feeling the most incredible pains down below. I share this story with you because like I said not enough people share their story. I don't know if it's out of shame again like I say embarrassment or shyness but I'm just hoping that by spirits talking about it we can let people let women know that it's fine to talk about it uh, especially for those that are going through it in silence or have just you know they don't know how to feel basically but yeah so I went to his workplace started feeling pain um, I've never felt pain like that before and the only way I can describe it is I, I don't think they kind of you can describe it. It's just it's almost like you've sat on something very, 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 very sharp, and you just feel like <sighs> you just feel like your uterus, basically, or whatever. Your flower is <laughs> just opening up, but something's clawing at you inside. That's how it felt, basically. And I remember just thinking, have I got a new infection or what's happening? And I was still bleeding at this point. Um, so I went into a room and at that point I was literally bending over in pain, screaming. I was in fetal position and I just thought, what the fuck is happening to me? And I just remember laying there, th just praying, please protect my baby. At this time, my husband was finished work and he was panicking as well. Um, so we went to the hospital with an ambulance and I suddenly started feeling nothing. I hadn't been given any painkillers or anything and I just didn't feel any pain for whatever reason. Got to the hospital and I asked the doctor, whilst I'm waiting for you, can you please take another pregnancy test? Obviously it was positive. I'll explain later. We were, I can't even remember what happened after that, it's such a blur, but basically we were booked in for a scan. And I was thinking, oh great, first scan, because I didn't really know much about it at that point. And then everyone was saying, why have you got a scan already? You're not even that far. I was like, I don't know, I've got one. Yeah, so we went and I was so excited to see something on that monitor. To see, you don't even know what you're looking at yourself when you first look at it because you've not been in that position. So you're just looking at a screen, looks like it's been badly tuned. And I just remember, ask, them asking me questions, are you sure? How far are you supposed to be? When she last trip, trip, test, when she last period, this and that. I was like, wow, I'm sure I am. Then they turned the monitor to me and said, there's nothing there. 
I said, what do you mean there's nothing there? I don't understand, I'm can't be stupid, but I don't know what I'm doing, you know. And that's when they literally said to me that there's nothing there, it's, you've lost your baby basically, you've lost it. Now, fortunately for me, even though it sounds bad still, I was only one to two weeks, two to three weeks, so it was still very early. And I know people who have gone further than that into months and they've had a stillborn. Which is, again, another experience that I would not want to put anyone through or have anyone go through. Um, but yeah, and I just remember laying there and I just, I just burst out in tears and everything went silent. And then I remembered she still had the gadget inside me that goes in basically, that determines if there's an embryo. Uh, yeah. And then she pulled it out and we went to another room and honest to God from there it just went quiet. People talking to me, giving me leaflets, I, I just wasn't listening at all. It's almost like I'd had things shoved in my ears and I just couldn't hear anything. I was in my own limbo thinking what the fuck has happened? Where is my baby? I'm getting quiet because of the kids um, and we went home, me and my husband, and we just went to bed. We just were so exhausted from everything. I don't really think we talked about it. We just knew that, you know, we needed to be there for each other. It obviously, it was hard for him as well because he was going to be a dad and he was so excited. Um, and I still had to bleed for a few weeks after that. That's what these guys do. And I just remember him saying to me, when is your pain gonna end? Your suffering? I said, oh, I don't know, whatever. I passed it. It was then that I actually started to think, am I ever gonna be able to have a baby? And I actually started thinking, oh, what did I do so wrong to do this or go through this? And I remember thinking of all the things that I'd probably done wrong. I thought, am I being punished? You know. But, Thankfully, thank God, we were blessed a month later and I got pregnant again with my first daughter, well my firstborn. And I tell you something, after going through that, I was so, so careful with her. I didn't run many places, well no, I did run <laughs> a bit, but I, I, I treat my body like a temple. I didn't want anyone touching near me, I was like, you know, so careful in the shower, I just didn't want to do anything that would alter my little child inside me. And I just remember thinking, my god, my god, my god, my god, I kept praying every time. Seeing her on the monitor for the first time, I, uh, I just, big sigh of relief. And now just, it took me a long time, I'm not even going to lie. I still remember every match, excuse me, every match that I think about this. Um, and I remember thinking I was going to call my, daughter, my my first child, Amelia. Um, this was before the issues happened, basically. Um, and I remember meeting someone who had a daughter who would have been the same age. Or who was born in the same month that that child would have been. And they were called Amelia, and I was looking at her thinking, were you my child? <laughs> you know, not going psycho, but just thinking. Um, but yeah. Now, thinking about it, and I've already told my husband this, I'm not happy that I went through it, because it's the worst thing I could have gone through. Um, in a pregnancy kind of topic way. But... God forbid it should happen to any three of my kids, as in my daughter or my two sons' partners. Um, I'm in a way I'm I'm kind of fortunate I can really be there for them and say, look, I've been through this and it's a bitch, but don't let it get to you kind of thing. Don't let it bring you down too much because people say all kinds of stuff to you like, oh, don't worry, you're still young and you'll have more children, you'll have more chance. You you don't want to hear that. 
as much as it's just well wishes from people you don't want to hear that because you've just gone through that it's like <sighs> i don't even know but yeah i'm I'm, I, I can just be like that all the time and look, I can really empathise with you because I've been there. You know, instead of people who are, you know, meaning well, but like, oh, I understand when they have no idea. So, like I said, the reason why I'm telling you this is because women should not be embarrassed to talk about it. They shouldn't be shy, they shouldn't be ashamed. There's no real reason why these things happen. And I remember being so angry because people get, you know, back then I was thinking people get pregnant by accident, people get pregnant from a one night stand, you know, teenagers got pregnant just from messing about and it really upset me because I thought here I am trying to have a child, a planned child and I'm not even getting one. A bit selfish in a way but, you know, um, but yeah, again, I don't, you know, however you conceive a child is you know it's your own business but some mothers from what I can see or I've heard some mothers think they've done something wrong or they're not meant to have a child not meant to conceive a child they can't do it they've tried for so long and it's not working you know they're stressing each other they're stressing themselves out because they're trying to have a baby and it's not happening or they've had a miscarriage I, I'm aware of the two people who have seven miscarriages and then they finally had a child, um, a healthy child. Some people will say that two peas will give you this myth that you're not meant to be able to carry a boy, that's why you've miscarried, you know, you can't carry a girl, that's why you've miscarried and whatever. I don't know the statistics on that, I don't know the science behind it or whatever, the biology, but um, yeah, you should not be ashamed to speak out. I know people don't like talking to groups because it's like I don't want to join a group not because you're proud but it's just not for you um, and I know that you know people feel embarrassed by talking about it because again I'm a woman I should be able to have a baby that's not anything significant you know it's not anything that's connected to it at all um, I was later told that apparently the pregnancy test that I took in sorry, I like I did something. But yeah, the pregnancy test that I took in the hospital was still positive because of my HCG levels were still high because obviously I just found out I was pregnant. So it was gonna take a while for them to go down, which is why I was given false hope that I was still pregnant. Not anyone's fault, it's just you know your body. But um so women going through it, don't be ashamed to talk about it. Don't be thinking it's your fault. Um, just, you know, I, I, I've been there so I know that you, you feel like you want to go inside yourself and you want to just phase everyone out, but take your time. And famous last words, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Any dads out there? Take care of yourself as well. Take care of each other. Also take your time. Don't blame each other. I'm not saying you would, but just don't. Nobody's fault. Um, and again, just keep trying because it'll be happening in time. In a very positive way, maybe you're not meant to have children, maybe you're meant to adopt. God knows there's children out there that would love to be adopted and given a family that loves them. Just don't be... And thinking, oh, I don't want to adopt a child because it's not mine, it's not my blood. What happens when they grow older and they want to find out about the parents? You know, just don't worry about that. As long as you give that child, whatever child that you get, whether you conceive it naturally, IVF, you know, adoption, fostering, whichever, whatever which course or pathway you take, as long as you give that child love, food, shelter, clothing, your time, patience, love, and you know, care for them that's all that they need. Everything else, you know, gifts and all these gadgets, they just come, they don't even have to come, but they come later. But yeah, um, we need, I know there's a baby, baby awareness on Sam's charity about this kind of thing, or 
baby awareness month or something like that. Still a bit still born I want awareness month, I'm not sure. But yeah, um, excuse me, I'm so tired. <laughs> um yeah. You can find them on online, any charities that you might want to support or get you know support from. I will try and link down below some websites if you'd like to look at them. I know that myself I didn't but I help my husband so yeah. Just be patient with each other um, and don't blame yourself. Just don't blame yourself. Okay, these things happen, it's not your fault. Um, and like I said, I was fortunate enough to be blessed with three children later on. And I always look at them and I tell you something, I really in a way having this experience has made me cherish it more i'm not saying i wouldn't cherish having children but it's made me that much extra appreciate being a parent and having these children because it's like i was given this opportunity this chance to have a child and bear it and god knows pregnancy and childbirth is wow um i can say that childbirth is i don't know I can't even say that it's worse than having a lost one, but they're both fucking painful. But obviously one gives you a positive benefit whereas the other one doesn't, but yeah. So like I said, you know, talk to somebody if you know they're going through it. Um, cherish your child when you have one. And I know we can all have days where we could just scream into a pillow, but I still have that little voice on my shoulder saying, you know what, look, you have these three kids. You're lucky, you're blessed. And I am. But yeah, um, I just wanted to share this story even though it's not really comfortable for me to tell you, but I think it would help a lot of people. Especially with it being Valentine's night because, you know, what happens on Valentine's, a lot of people get jiggy with it. So, <laughs> yeah. Giving a bit of fun to the vlog. Um, so yeah, I, I really hope this has helped people, and it or I really hope it helps anybody going through the same thing, or has gone through it, or is going through it, or knows a friend who has gone through this. And again, just remember, it's not your fault. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. And be there for each other, obviously. Um, and pray. I know that's easy coming from me. If you don't want to pray, each to their own. You know, everyone's got their own way of life, religion, but I pray a lot, especially for my children. And I pray for each of my pregnancies, so yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, if you did like this vlog, please do give it a thumbs up, just to let me know that you were comfortable with it and that you found it guiding, spiritual, whatever. Comment down below if you'd like to share anything with me or any questions you might want me to answer that I might not have mentioned anything in here and please do subscribe to share and awareness you know because it's not that I'm on a trend but I think a lot of people need to hear this message so yeah please do subscribe and also because you know the analytics needs to bump up a bit <laughs> but yeah again happy Valentine's Day I wish you everybody in the world all the best anyone who's with the present right now. I'm praying for your baby and your health. Anybody who's gone through a miscarriage recently, praying for your healing and for another blessing. That will be, what's the word? Fulfilled. But yeah. Thank you for joining me tonight. Good night. God bless.